Welcome to the Locked On Titans podcast. I am your host, Tyler Rowland. Titans fans, it is a Thursday edition of the Locked On Titans podcast. On today's show, we are going to get an in-depth look at some of the Titans' top prospects from the NFL draft from the hosts of the Locked On shows that covered them in college. First, we're going to have John Neighbors from Locked On Arkansas on the show to break down Traylon Burks. Then, we are going to have Zach Blackerby from the Locked On Auburn podcast to break down Roger McCreary, and we will cap off with Jay Stevens from the Locked On Buckeyes podcast, breaking down not only Nicholas petit Ferrer but undrafted free agent Haskell Garrett as well. So going in-depth on some of the Titans draft picks from the guys who covered them the closest on a Thursday edition of the Locked On Titans podcast. Let's get it! You are Locked On Titans, your daily Tennessee Titans podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Titans fans, it is a Thursday edition of the Locked On Titans podcast. We are going to get an in-depth breakdown for some of the college prospects. The Titans drafted the top three picks here from the guys who knew them best, the guys who covered them in college, the Locked On hosts from the college podcast. Very excited to dive into that. Before we do, want to thank you guys again for making the Locked On Titans podcast your first listen every day. If this is your first ever listen to the Locked On Titans podcast, make sure you subscribe on whatever platform you do stream. I am going to be putting out daily Monday through Friday Tennessee Titans content, not only during the season, but all year long. So make sure you subscribe on whatever platform you do stream. That includes the Locked On Titans YouTube channel. Subscribe over there, smash the notification bell, and throw a thumbs up on the video if you're watching right now. But the Titans' first pick in the draft was Traylon Burks from Arkansas, the wide receiver. We are going to bring on John Neighbors, host of Locked On Arkansas, to give us an in-depth look at Traylon Burks from college and the type of player the Titans might be getting this season. Really excited to kick off this behind-the-scenes, in-depth Thursday edition of the Locked On Titans podcast, talking about some of the Titans draft picks and going to the source, the best source that we could possibly find to give us some insight as to what happened during this player's college career. And we're going to start with Traylon Burks, and that means we are going to start with John Neighbors from Locked On Hogs. Thank you so much for coming on tonight. John, how are you doing? Man, I'm doing great. I'm doing great. How about yourself? Doing fantastic. Uh, even in the offseason, it's busy season in the NFL. So we'll dive right in. Traylon Burks comes out. Obviously, some Titans fans are not happy about the A.J. Brown trade. I do feel a bit bad for Traylon that, you know, his draft pick kind of got lopped into all of that A.J. Brown stuff. But just talking about Traylon and your experience from covering him in college, what kind of guy are the Tennessee Titans getting here? You know, I understand how Titans fans feel. I, I can kind of, you know, it's like it's unfair that maybe some of the unwarranted criticism comes towards right. Traylon Burks and everything. But uh, I'm telling you, and I have said this many times, and I'm not just trying to be, you know, like a homer towards Arkansas or anything like that. But Traylon Burks is the is a generational talent here at Arkansas. There's been very few players that have been able to showcase sheer ability like Traylon Burks has. I mean, ever since Darren McFadden, he was probably the last one at Arkansas uh, who was a Heisman Trophy runner up back-to-back -back years that showcased that type of talent. And the thing that made Traylon so great is not only did he have really no weakness in his game, he had high-level speed, he could jump out of a gym, he had huge hands, I was able to make so many crazy highlight catches, mm -hmm. all of those things. But what stands out, and this is something that even Sam Pittman, the head coach of Arkansas, talked about many times, is no matter what, he would do whatever it took to win. He said every single time, he's like, I don't care if I don't have any catches. Whatever whatever I can do to help the team win, I'm going to do it. He was a guy that loved to block downfield. Something as simple as that, where he would get a great position on a guy and just keep moving him and pushing him mm -hmm. around. And, and he's just, he's the do it your all guy. And he just wants to work. He wants to play football. He didn't do a bunch of NIL deals because he just wanted to focus on football. It just wasn't something that he was that interested in. So, the Titans, you know, I don't, I'm not going to sit here and try to say that he can for sure replace A.J. Brown because I feel like that's right. a lot to ask. But as far as the ability, the talent, the workhorse, all those things, 
Traylon Burks and then the Tennessee Titans is, I think is going to be a huge and a great fit. And I think Titans fans are really going to see that in year one from Traylon Burks. Yeah, I think he can contribute in certain ways year one, uh, you know, getting him quick throws to let him use that ability, use that side strength speed combination. Obviously, not everybody comes onto the college scene and is immediately a thousand yard receiver in the SEC. Can you just tell me when maybe you realized that that Traylon Burks was going to be the type of player that you're describing him as for Arkansas and a, a first round draft pick? When did you really be like, oh, OK, this kid is special? Well, here's the thing is that you can't really take his freshman year into consideration because, and I know Titans fans probably don't care about this, but Chad Morris was the head coach at Arkansas, and he was the worst coach in SEC football history. Like, that's not even a question. He didn't know what to do with Traylon Burks. So you can't put his first – because he's such a great talent. He didn't have a single touchdown catch his first year because of how terrible Chad Morris was. But anyways, fast forward to his sophomore year. When I realized uh, in his second year, under first year of Sam Pittman during the COVID season, I realized that he was going to be a next-level player where every single game that Arkansas went up, which they played 10 straight SEC games, so it wasn't even like they had any gimmies. 10 straight SEC games. Every game, he had a touchdown. He had a crazy play. He had an incredible like highlight moment. It's just you kept building where it was like the defenses know in the SEC where the ball's going. They know who the best wide receiver is on this team. They would double team him. They'd put a safety on him, whatever, and it didn't matter. He would still make plays. He'd make one-handed catches. And I think the moment where it really just blew my pants off was against Ole Miss in 2020 where he had a catch. And and for those of you who are watching this or listening to this, go and look it up on YouTube and you'll see what I'm talking about. 2020 Ole Miss. He has a catch in the back of the end zone that Felipe Franks throws him a pass. He catches it with one hand. He's able to control himself in the corner, put one foot down as well as another foot, an NFL caliber catch. And it was something that nobody could even believe. Like, it, it was just an incredible highlight. And when people saw that, as well as some of the other highlight plays he made, everyone knew. It was like, if this is a 19, 20-year-old kid and he's doing this in the SEC, there's no reason to believe that he can't go into the NFL, especially at a good franchise, and do the same thing. So even then in his sophomore year, he, he, could, he, could, he was ready for the NFL then. Like, he was ready for it. So I just, I just don't see any way, shape, or form, as long as he stays healthy, that he doesn't become a huge impact for the Titans. Yeah, and that's exactly what the Titans are hoping for. And you talked about that that playmaking ability in the SEC. No gimmies. We're talking about the best talent in the country at the college level. And that's obviously, if you look at John Robinson's draft class for the Titans this year, Traylon Burks, the highlight of that. He wanted guys from the biggest conferences that were productive at the highest levels of football. And Burks, obviously, checks that box to the nth degree. So thank you so much, John, for coming on. Tell the people where they can find your content. Absolutely. For anybody that wants to know more about the the Razorbacks, all things football, basketball, baseball, whatever it is, it's the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. You can follow me on Twitter at Buzz John Neighbors. Do a radio show here in Little Rock, 103.7 The Buzz. You can check it out there as well. So if, you, if you're a big fan of Arkansas, you'll be a big fan of me and my content. So be sure to check it out. Absolutely no. Titans fans have a mixture of Tennessee, Bama, Arkansas, anywhere in the South. So uh, there's, of course, going to be some hogs listening right now that will appreciate that content. Go check out John on his radio show. Check out the Locked On Hogs podcast. John, thank you so much for coming on. Absolutely. Appreciate it, man. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that excellent interview with John Neighbors from Locked On Razorbacks. We are going to continue today's show. We're going to get into the Titans' second pick in the draft, Roger McCreary from Auburn. And for that, we're going to bring on one of my favorite guys, Zach Blackerby from the Locked On Auburn podcast. Before we get into that, though, do want to tell you guys about BlueNile.com. Guys, Mother's Day is Sunday, and if you want to make sure that you get your mom or whatever special lady in your life a gift that she'll remember forever, make sure to go to BlueNile.com to check out their selection of everyday fine jewelry. They have diamond jewelry, they have cocktail rings, they have tennis bracelets, they have gold layering jewelry. I mean, everything that you could imagine to make mom feel special. Whether you want a statement piece or just everyday subtle elegance, you're going to find it at BlueNile.com. And they have 24-7 support on hand at all times, whether it be via phone or via chat, to make sure you find a memorable gift. This Mother's Day, give mom something she'll treasure forever with fine jewelry from BlueNile.com. And my listeners get $50 off $500. This podcast exclusive is only good through Mother's Day. 
Use promo code Locked On. That's code Locked On, and you'll get fifty dollars off five hundred. Every order is insured. It ships for free, and it arrives in discreet packaging, so you don't give away the surprise. Shop stress free and find your forever peace. Go to BlueNile.com today. As promised, we are here with Zach Blackerby, the host of Locked On Auburn, one of the most knowledgeable guys you could ever find about his college team and uh, uh, another uh, of the uh, quartet of excellent hosts that share uh, a restream with me. Uh, Zach, thank you for coming on the show. I'm excited to dive into Roger McCreary, who you know best. Yeah, look, I I love Roger McCreary. Roger McCreary is one of my favorite players that I've ever been able to cover. And so um, I- I'm glad he uh, he's only a few hours north, so maybe I can go up and see him every now and then. But yeah, yeah, Roger McCreary, absolute stud. Uh, well, obviously, you're a big fan of him. What what kind of has made him one of your favorite players that you've covered there? Yeah, man, I, I love defensive backs, you know, that-, that are able to line up and just beat the crap out of you over the course of a game. And I, I think Roger McCreary can do that. And we saw him do it a lot, not in 2021, but the previous seasons, because Auburn changed defensive coordinators with their coaching, um, coaching staff overhaul that happened, um, you know, before this past season. And so, in Kevin Steele's defense, it was just a ton of bump and run. I mean, they killed you with just simplicity. He lined up on the outside, and it was just bump and run, and he didn't allow any separation. And it's the same defense that produced and really the same role that produced Carlton Davis and Jamel Dean and Noah Igmanogany. And so all of those guys, Noah hasn't really proved himself yet, but was a first round of the Dolphins. Um, I I think Roger is the next in line of all of these guys. And it's just that, you know, you put them on the line of scrimmage and you let them go. Now this past year, he then played for Derek Mason's defense and they Mm -hmm. play a lot more zone. He played off the line of scrimmage. And it took him about six or seven games, took the whole defense about six or seven games to really kind of adapt because it's just so much different and really a lot more complex than what they were doing before. And so I think with this, he's a little bit more versatile and a little bit more scheme ready um, for what the Titans want to do. Yeah, and I think that while the Titans do want to mix in some zone and things like that, I think the Titans ultimately want to play that bump and run, press at the line of scrimmage, and and see what you can do. So I think he fits well there. I think one of the big questions coming out of the draft for me was what his role can be on an NFL defense. There are some people in the scouting community that think he might be more of a slot player at the next level, but one of the things that the Titans talked about after he was drafted and he talked about is that he could have inside-outside versatility. Do you think that he has the versatility and the size necessary to play on the outside some, or do you think that primarily to, to make his bones, he's going to be in the slot? Yeah, I didn't see him at the slot at Auburn a ton. I think PFF had him at like seven total snaps and, mm-hmm. you know, a nickel. Um, in the senior bowl, they put him inside almost exclusively, right. which kind of tells you, okay, the NFL is viewing him as yeah. that kind of player. I think he's got the athleticism for it, and I think he's got um, the feet for it. You know, the big question about him was his arm length, right? Yeah. And so, I mean, you, you can't, you can't mix those numbers up. His arm length is what it is. They're not going to get two inches longer. So, you know, if, if that's the case and the Titans don't try him an outside corner, I think that'd be a shame. You, you got to assume they're going to try him at everything just to see what it, what translates yeah. and what doesn't. But I think, I think he's physical enough to play outside at the next level. Maybe not exclusively, but I think you can get a piece that you're able to move in and out. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think early on, you know, why we're why we're discussing it, the Titans like to rotate their defenders, and Elijah sure. Molden, another cornerback, came from Washington last year. He basically played the early downs in the slot as kind of a pseudo outside linebacker who can also be a slot, play some zone on early downs, blitz off the slot, blah blah. blah. But then they would bring in a Buster Screen to play on the slot in passing downs and take Elijah Molden off the field. So maybe that's the the destined role for McCreary to kind of help him dip his feet in the water at the slot, maybe progress out in time. But one thing I think that really stands out about McCreary during his time in college was the big-time matchups that he had with some of these receivers in the SEC. I know he's yeah. had quite a few, and I know you personally are, are very infatuated with his performance in the Iron Bowl. So why don't you just break down maybe some – some of his better performances or maybe some of the top names he's gone up against and had some good performances. 
Yeah, I mean, you see all these Alabama guys that go in the first round over the last two or three years. He's right. gone one v one against all those guys, and he wins most of those matchups. And yeah, you and I were texting after he got drafted. I'm like, dude, you need to be excited about this guy. And you're like, ah, well, you know, talk me into it. I'm trying to. I'm trying to. Um, but I think that 2021 Iron Bowl with what Roger McCreary put on tape was one of the best performances by a defensive back I've ever seen. And just the mm-hmm. context of that matchup of like Auburn had no business being in that game. And it went to four overtimes, Tyler. It went to four overtimes. I mean, that was not a good Auburn team last year. And Alabama obviously played in the national championship, went down to it right towards the end against Georgia. Right. And Roger was a big part of that. Roger took away a third of the field. And so, you know, the rest of the defense was able to kind of do their thing. And um, Bryce Young was kind of, you know, stymied by a pass rush because he couldn't find guys open. And Roger was a big part of that. But, I mean, you've seen Auburn's defense stand up against, you know, elite LSU receivers. I mean, you know, that's a who's who as well. Right. Um, I think he defended Jamar Chase that year. Yes. He would have been a, a sophomore, possibly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so... Um, and I think his numbers in that one were pretty good too. So the dude's battle tested. He knows what it takes to go up against and prepare for really, really elite wide receivers. And obviously, you know, that's why the SEC is so heavily drafted. It's because these guys are talented and they're battle tested. They know what it takes. Yeah. Well, I guess the last question I have for you after going through kind of his skill set, his history there, uh, how was he perceived by the coaching staff, his other teammates, maybe even, you know, people on, on the campus or in the Auburn community online. Uh, what were the the feelings towards Roger McCreary from, from his coaches and everybody who watched him uh, on his game days? So Roger's a, he's really likable, but man, he's, um he's quiet. You don't see many shutdown corners that don't have, you know, a, a mouth to them as well. And right. Roger has some swag. Don't get me wrong here, Tyler, but, um, you, you don't see him talking too much. And that's what was so fun about that Iron Bowl because it came out a little bit. It came out a little bit, and it was really, really fun to watch. But you got a guy that's first into the office every day. You got a guy that's going to work his tail off, and he's going to line up and beat you every single rep that he possibly can. And he's really not going to say anything because he just kind of lets his play do the talking. He lets his teammates kind of you know be the ones that are jawing off. He's focused on getting ready for the next play which is interesting. You don't really see a whole lot of that from cornerbacks. Right. Um, but I think he's earned the respect of all of this. I mean, Roger was a three-star kid out of Mobile. And Kevin Steele, uh, Auburn's previous defensive coordinator, had to beg Auburn's previous head coach, Gus Malzahn, to add this guy. Three-star dude. Auburn was pretty much dra- you know, getting exclusive four stars at that point. Mm-hmm. And um, they beg- he begged, and he's like, okay, we can offer the kid. And he impressed since day one. Um, He wasn't, you know, he didn't let that ranking define him. I don't think he's going to let this second round draft status define him. He went in and worked. And I I think that's what you're getting with Roger McCreary. Yeah, absolutely. Sounds like a a physical, battle-tested, feisty, uh, humble guy who loves football. With short yeah. arms, who loves football and baked beans. That's what the Titans are getting with Roger McCreary. But thank you so much, Zach, for coming on and breaking down McCreary's game. We appreciate it, and good luck to Auburn. Hey, thanks, buddy. All right, folks. What an excellent interview with Zach. Like I said, one of my favorite guys at the network. He does a fantastic job. And I'm going to do a little Malik Willis in-depth full episode and Zach did cover Malik for two seasons at Auburn so he's got a lot to say be excited to bring him back on but we're going to move the show forward it's time to talk to Jay Stevens from Locked On Buckeyes about two different prospects the Titans came away with after draft weekend before we get into that though do want to tell you guys a little bit about betonline.net BetOnline.net is your number one source for all your betting stats and sports info. You can find all the latest sports developments, league reviews, and news, including information about this year's basketball playoffs, Major League Baseball's regular season, or even this weekend's Kentucky Derby. BetOnline is your continued source for all your sporting wagering information, from live betting to playoffs to esports and more. Head to their website today or use your mobile device to learn more about all the trends and all the action. BetOnline where the game starts. Titans fans, we are going to continue this in-depth prospect breakdown episode of the Locked On Titans podcast. We've been bringing on college hosts from our Locked On shows to give us some insight 
into some of these players that the Titans have drafted from last weekend. So we're bringing on Jay Stevens from the Locked On Buckeyes podcast to talk about not only Nicholas petit Ferrer from Ohio State, but also a Titans undrafted free agent, Haskell Garrett. So we're going to be talking these prospects, getting kind of some insight into what these guys were like in college. Jay, I definitely do appreciate you coming on. Before we dive into the discussion, let all these people know where they can find your work and where you're breaking down the Buckeyes every day. You guys can follow me on Twitter at jsteven07 to make sure you're tapped into the Locked on Buckeyes podcast every Monday through Friday. It's free and available wherever you get your fine podcast. Absolutely, absolutely. And not only that, but this is a little bit of a crossover segment. I did a couple of segments on uh, one of Jay's shows this week on Locked on Buckeyes. You guys want to check that out, show some love over there. And I know some Buckeye fans listen to the Locked on Titans podcast. Get over there. Subscribe to Locked on Buckeyes. And check out Jay breaking it down every single weekday. But Jay, to dive in here. Nicholas Petit Ferrer was drafted with pick 69 for the Tennessee Titans, their uh, day two pick right before Malik Willis. And while his excitement about him being drafted may have been a tad drowned out by the Malik Willis pick, I think Petit Ferrer has a chance to have a really big role with the Titans, not only now, but in the future. So I guess I just wanted to ask you, what did his role look like at Ohio State? And kind of what what's the feelings about Petit Ferrer from his time with the Buckeyes? Petit Ferrer is one of those guys that no matter if he was at the left side where he was in 2021 or on the right side at tackle in 2020, he was a staple. He was a guy that at the outside, you really had a very, very hard time um, in pass protection. He was a phenomenal, really not many guys got back to either um, Justin Fields or CJ Stroud. They were, they, they were very kept, they were kept upright in the pocket, right. be, partly because of Petit Ferrer on the outside. But also in the running game, what I saw a lot this past year was they ran behind him quite a bit more expected it was more than what i expected from them of course they had they had tight ends pulling around and um zone schemes that were perfect for the backs that ohio state has but he's one of those guys that i do think being in the third round there's a lot of value at this with this pick there's a lot of value that you're getting and you're right. getting a guy and i we talked about it on locked on buck guys i love versatility i love guys mm-hmm. that can play um, inside or outside, either on the D line. Uh, if you can play both, if you can play so inside the linebacker, if you can play inside <laughs> linebacker or outside linebacker, which is so hard to do, um, right. I also like that as well. If you can play ni- uh, nickel corner or outside corner, one of those skill sets that I don't think people really realize how hard it is. I love that. But when you can be an offensive lineman and play left tackle and right tackle and yes. almost simultaneously not lose leverage, not lose your footwork, not lose your quickness, dude, that's rare. And you're yeah. getting that with with Nicholas Petit Freyer in the third round, buddy. That's a luxury. Yeah, absolutely. And and you know that versatility was pointed out by the general manager that left or right side. So I know Titans fans are sick of hearing that a guy can play tackle and guard, but I really do think we are talking about a full time tackle here. And that leads me to my question. I know you said that he kind of didn't miss a beat, but would you say that he did perform better at either right or left tackle, even if it's by small margin? I would say right tackle, and I do believe mm-hmm. it's partly because of coaching. Ohio State last year had a little – okay, they made some weird decisions with the offensive line, and I do think that moving him to left was more so looking into the future than what the best need was for the team at that time. And mm-hmm. so, you know, left tackle more um, appealing for NFL executives. But yeah. I think the best fit for him at Ohio State was right tackle based off personnel that the team had. Now – I'm not saying he didn't flourish at left tackle, but we even saw last year, there were times that when they reshuffled the offensive line, he went back to right tackle. So I'm not right. saying like he's bad at one side or another. He's good at both, but I still think his best fit might be right tackle because honestly, that's where he got most of his looks from and plays from, reps from in college. Yeah, I, I honestly think that would be perfect for the Titans because it's my opinion that Dylan Raiden's the second-round pick from 2021, should be a left tackle going forward. So if Petit Ferrer, even by a small margin, can be better at the right tackle, I think Petit Ferrer at right tackle with Raiden's at left tackle could be the bookend tackles of the future for the Titans. So that's very encouraging to hear. I want to transition the conversation away from Petit Ferrer, though, and to Haskell Garrett, an undrafted free agent, defensive lineman, 
for the Titans. As I've discussed on my show, as we talked about on Locked On Buckeyes, Haskell Garrett has a great chance to make this roster because the Titans, for the last few years, have found a way to add an undrafted free agent interior defensive lineman to that 53-man roster. So I guess, similar question to start with Petit Ferrer, someone who covers the team daily. What what was the vibe around Haskell Garrett when he was at Ohio State? How does teammates react to him? How the coaches talk about him? And, and do you think that he has the skill set to be able to make it in the NFL? Fan favorite, um, nicknamed by some Haskell the Rascal, um, one of those guys that when after well, before the 2020 season had a little incident prior to that, got shot in August, was still yeah. still playing in every game um, in 2020, 2020. Get in 2020. my years mixed up. I think it was 2020. Dude, it was a crazy was, couple man. of past few Dude, years, what, man. Whatever it was, the COVID <laughs> and all that stuff that happened, my right. time frame is off. But he did get shot in the face at, a, a month before the season, ended up playing every game in that year. May have been 2019. Once again, my dates and everything are messed up. But he was a fan favorite. And I do think with Haskell Garrett, he's a player that is going to be gritty, is going to grind, is going to find a way to make the roster. Do I think he'll start right away? Absolutely not. Do I think he'll be a roster piece, a rotational piece? Absolutely. Because I think that once he makes that 53-man roster, he's going to show you and prove to you you mm-hmm. can't keep him off the field. You have to play him. Now, um, the gap ski, the shooting, the penetration he, that he has, he's really good at that. There's numerous plays from numerous stops along the way. I mean, he was a previous All-American. This guy can ball. This guy yeah. can play. I just think that sometimes injuries and sometimes coaching decisions kind of hurt him a little bit. And ultimately, coaching decisions were due to him not cementing his, cementing his spot and saying, I need to play right now. I am one of the best. But ultimately, coaching decisions, those can propel you, encourage you to get better. And plus, when you're a pro, not in college, when you have more free time to dedicate to your craft, when you have Mm -hmm. the means and the avenue and the resources to make sure everything you're doing is tip top for you at the right way for you. Buddy, I like it. I love it. And I can't wait to see what Haskell Haskell Garrett does with the Tennessee, Tennessee Titans. I can't talk today. Hey, you know what, man? You you gave all of the great information that we needed. Uh, I I am very excited for Haskell Garrett as well, and and like I mentioned, interior defensive lineman just find a way to to make the roster as an undrafted free agent, and uh, Garrett has enough talent to definitely do that. Jay, thank you so much for coming on. Make sure you guys check out the Locked On Buckeyes podcast, free and available on all platforms Monday through Friday, where it's your team every day. Jay, thank you so much for coming on. We'll talk to you soon. All right, folks, I hope you enjoyed that interview with Jay Stevens. Again, go check out Locked On Buckeyes. I did a segment on his show as well. But thank you all so much for making the Locked On Titans podcast your first to listen every day. Once again, make sure you subscribe on whatever platform you do stream. I'm going to be putting out free Monday through Friday daily Tennessee Titans content all year long. I'm going to be back with you guys tomorrow. We're going to do just a mailbag Friday. I'm going to be going live on YouTube, taking questions from the chat. Very excited to cap off the week with that. But that's going to do it for me today, though, folks. As always, I am your host, Tyler Rowland, and this was Locked on Titan.